Okay, in this project we're going to be playing with servo motors. Um, a servo motor is uh, a kind of DC motor, like this thing. This is just a regular DC CAN motor. You see it's controlled with two wires. One goes to power, one goes to ground. And if you wire it up in one direction, the motor spins in one direction. And if you reverse the polarity, the motor spins in the other direction. Servo motors have this interesting property of actually letting you position them. And they do that because they have a control line. So unlike the uh, generic DC motor, they have these three wires. Um, sometimes it makes it easier for me to hook them up to the breadboard if I use one of these little uh, socket things with three pins. But at any rate, the three wires are power, ground, and then a control line that's usually yellow or white. Um, the dark line here is ground, the red wire is power, and the yellow or white wire will be the control. And uh, what happens is we give it a pulsed, uh, a pulsed current, and that pulsed current uh, allows us to position the servo in a particular place. What can we use that could generate a timed pulse? And for that, we're using the 555 timer chip. Again, to build this circuit to make a controller for a servo motor for positioning a servo, uh, we're just going to um, look at a circuit diagram, and then we're going to walk around the chip uh, starting with pin 1, the upper left hand pin, uh, with the notch at the top. Uh, they go 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5, 6, 7, 8 coming up the other side. And we just walk around the chip and make sure that we make all the connections that go to each one of those pins. And then we'll see if we can control our servo. Starting with pin 1, I see that that's connected to ground, so I just have a wire going over to my blue rail here. Uh, and then to pin 2, pin 2 uh, goes two different places. One is that, as with any A-stable uh, mode for the 555, when it's used as an oscillator, we need to connect pin 2 to pin 6, uh, which causes it to re-trigger itself continually to generate a, a waveform, an oscillation. And the other place where pin 2 goes, besides going over here to pin 6, is it goes through a 0.1 capacitor, 0.1 microfarad capacitor, also to ground, so I'm hooking that up also up to my blue rail. Now pin 3 is my output, that's going to be a pulsed wave, and instead of hooking all of my motor up right now to pin 3, I'm just going to abstract that away a little bit up here to a higher row so that I can connect all of the different uh, connections that go to the servo motor. It's going to need one wire for ground, one for plus, and one for my control, which is now coming from pin 3. So in looking at the wires coming from my servo, I see that the order of them is ground, plus, and then control. So they're going to be going in that order. And so if I have my pin 3, the control line here, um, then I need to have a wire going to plus, and then a wire to ground. And then the last pin on this side of the chip is pin 4 which looking at the schematic, it, I see that it's connected to power. So then I just need one more jumper that goes from the red rail over to pin four. And now I'm done with the left side of the chip. Next, as we go over to the other side to pin five, um, I see on the schematic that this is a 0.01 microfarad capacitor that's going to ground. And it, it doesn't really have a marking that's very legible on this one without a magnifying glass, but I happen to know that that's a 0.01 microfarad capacitor that's going to pin 5. So now as I go to pin 6, I see that, it, again, I've already visited that as, as it's connected to pin 2 so that this will continually re-trigger. Uh, and the next step is I need to connect that pin 6 to pin 7 through a variable resistor, which is two legs of a pot. And I find that it's kind of difficult for me to fit that in here because I'm going to have to bend up one of the legs of the pot. So I'm going to move both of those things up a little higher above the chip here so I have room to plug in uh, my pot uh, separate from those two pins. So pin 6 goes up there, and then pin 7 goes up next to it. Then my pot here will have one leg in 6 and the wiper in 7. Next, I have a 10 resistor that's connecting that uh, variable resistance from my, my variable resistor here is connecting that to plus 
That again is the row that has got my pin 7 in it. Okay, and the last pin on my chip, pin 8, I see just goes to power. So I'm connecting up pin 8 to the red rail. And that should make me all hooked up to be able to control this servo motor. So now let's see what happens. I apply power. Now here's my servo. So I can twist this pot and control the position of the motor, but I think I have something in mind that might be a little more fun. So I'm going to take power off of this and I'm going to add in series between that 10K resistor and my pot that I'm adjusting. I want to add in this photoresistor and that will let me do crazy things like wave my hands to change the resistance and therefore the position of the motor. two legs of the pot. So there's actually two kinds of servos. This is called a standard servo and it'll rotate about 95 degrees or something, 80 to 90 degrees, one direction and then backwards depending on how you set the resistance here. Uh, but there's another kind of servo that's called a continuous rotation servo. And if you attach that one, then what we get is a slightly different behavior where it can spin. This is what's used for the wheels on uh, cars. So with this one, it will go in one direction as fast as it can go, and then as fast as it can go in the other direction, and then as you move and adjust the resistance, you can get it to slow down and maybe even stop. And then you would use this pot to adjust the range so that then the light and shadow would give you the right behavior that you're after to make this interactive. And it can be used for a lot of different applications in robotics and kinetic artwork.